You know what? I'm about to make a mistake. Well, it is that time. It is time for me to do the 50 hour maintenance on the Kubota LX2610. Uh, currently, I'm in my garage. I'm not at the Overlook, I'm at home. And I have the rear blade, the scraper blade attached to the back of the tractor. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the tractor. I'm gonna move it outside and drop that rear blade. Uh, and also just let the engine warm up a little bit uh, so the engine oil will drain a little better uh, when it's time to do that. So let me get the tractor out of here, get that done, and then we'll come back. We'll talk about uh, the materials I'm going to use, the tools I'm going to use, and we'll go through the whole process. Uh, what we're going to need. I have my manuals. I have the manual both for the tractor and for the front end loader. Uh, good to have. Uh, I've got my lube shuttle because we're going to need to do some lubrication. And then I've got uh, the hydraulic fluid, engine oil. I've got an extra quart because I probably need a tad bit over what's in the jug here. Uh, I've got three filters. We have the oil filter. We have the uh, transmission filter. What? Do I have that right? No. Uh, this is the hydraulic filter, and this is the transmission filter. Um, the transmission filter uh, is printed with uh, HST for hydraulic transmission. Uh, suction filter is your um, uh, hydraulic. Engine oil is the little one. Uh, you'll need some sort of a wrench to get the uh, various filters loose. Uh, you're going to need a torque wrench. Um, you'll need an extension to reach in and get the, um, to reach the lug nuts on the rear wheels. And then, uh, to the best of my knowledge, you're going to need a 17, a 19, and a 22 inch, um, socket. Um, and if I discover anything else along the way, uh, we'll find that out together. All right. Lest you be concerned about how this thing is secured, I do have a safety chain around the raised loader, uh, and I also have the uh, loader lock, uh, which is this switch down here. If you push this over and down, it locks out the controls uh, of, the, um, of the loader lift, so you can't inadvertently knock the thing down. So before I get too far into this, I do want to say that this video is specifically for the LX2610 ROPS model. Uh, most of this that I will tell you also applies to the cab model and to the LX3310, but not everything. There are some differences, so uh, if you've got one of those, keep that in mind. Uh, and also, I'm not a Kubota technician. I'm not even a, a, an expert on tractors. I'm just a guy in my garage doing this, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. Look at your own manual. Do what you think is best. All right. First thing I'm going to do is drain the oil. There are two drain plugs underneath here. Get on there. Oh, that was easy. I will tell you that the directions for changing the oil will not be found in your owner's manual under the 50 hour maintenance. They will be found in the 200 hour maintenance. So if you go looking for it, uh, you might have a little trouble finding it. I did. Not that changing oil is rocket science, but uh, something you want, want to be mindful of. Also, there is a, supposed to be a copper gasket on here.
No, I'm not seeing it. Usually I have a little tray, a magnetic tray to drop these things in and I forgot to get it when I came down here. Once I get this other one off, I'm going to go up top and open the fuel oil cap, which will let this drain a lot faster. Oh, there's one of those gaskets, yep, and the other one is on there, so I got both. All right, let's open up that cap. Ugh. Let's see here. There we go. Just so you can see it, there is that copper washer on both of the uh, fill plugs. If you lose that, you're going to have to replace it. All right, the oil filter is on this side, so we have to remove the side cover. It's super easy. Just kind of lift and pull, and out it comes. You don't need any tools to do that. Same on the other side. And the oil filter is right here. All right, got my oil drain pan. I got a rag, which I'm sure I'm going to need. I've got a wrench here for the filter. Actually, let me get the new filter ready. So, got the plastic on here. Go ahead and take that off. Of course, as always, you put a little clean oil around the gasket. So I've got my clean oil over here. So that's ready to go. Doesn't help having that radiator hose right there. There we go. I can do it with my hand now. There we go. Yeah, I'm just going to go for it. Yeah, not too bad. You don't want this too tight either. All right, we're going to call that good. The other thing I want to do is write the date. And the hours on here. One thirty twenty-two. All right, I'm admitting it now. I'm doing this at sixty hours. Don't yell at me. I'm a little behind. All right. See, enough oil has drained out of here. We can put these back. That one started. And get this one started. Uh, not to state the obvious, but you don't want to cross thread these holes, so make sure you're lined up. Don't just jam an impact wrench on there. In fact, these don't need to be super tight. You know, I've got them finger tight and then uh, 
the turn maybe. Before we add the oil, I would like to just mention one thing that I thought was odd, and that was the order of operations for the oil change in the owner's manual. Um, as I said, you have to find the steps to do the oil change at the 200 hour service. Step number one for the service is to change the filter, and step number two is to change the oil. Now that goes contrary to everything I've ever seen or learned, and so I did it backwards, as you have seen. Uh, I, chain, I drain the oil, uh, change the filter, and then I will add new oil all the way around. Maybe it doesn't make a great deal of difference, but uh, I, I broke with what the manual said for that one. All right, to do this, I think it probably helps to have a long funnel, which I have here. Now, the tractor takes four liters of oil, according to the manual. Uh, this is a gallon, so four quarts. So I do have an additional can, I'm sorry, an additional bottle of oil to get that 0.2 quart to make up for the metric conversion. Okay, now we're going to do the transmission filter. I can get it open. Uh, this time I'm going to write on it before I put it up there. One, thirty, twenty-two. All right, and we'll put a little dab of clean, clean oil on there. Here we go again. Ugh. Okay. You know what? I'm about to make a mistake. Well, guys, disaster averted, but it was a close thing. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned that there were two filters and they're very similar in size. One is marked suction filter, one is marked filter HST. The suction filter is for your hydraulics, the HST filter is for your transmission. Now, I had that right when I got underneath the tractor a second ago to replace the filter, but uh, I got a little switched around looking at the diagrams in the manual and the filter I started to loosen was actually the hydraulic filter not the transmission filter. Fortunately, I noticed, wait, the size doesn't look like it matches. I physically held it up and looked. It didn't. I stopped what I was doing. Uh, I double checked everything and uh, no harm, no foul. I caught it in time. But just be mindful that it's an easy mistake to make. So when you're changing the filters, make sure you got the right one and you're taking the right one off. All right, let's try this another time. comes the messy one. Wish me luck. All right. Tighten, loosen.
Yik. I guess, huh? Well, that's the dirtiest part of the job done. All gravy after this. Oh. <laughs> I didn't record that. Oh well. This is what I just changed. mess down there. That's what I just took off. Well, he didn't miss much. Boy, the rop lights make good video lights. So let's see here. I know I lost a fair amount of fluid. Let's see. Yeah, pretty much off the off the gauge there. Let's wipe that off. This will probably be easier with a smaller bottle of fluid. Put too much, so I'm going to do this a little at a time. to run this and cycle some fluid through there. I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna have to start this up. I took the tractor outside, I drove it around for a few minutes, and I worked the loader up and down as well as the three-point hitch. I brought it back, and here you can see that I am topping off the fluid levels, both the engine oil and the hydraulic oil. Pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so that's the dirty part of the job's done. Uh, we've done the oil change and oil filter, the transmission fluid filter, the hydraulic filter, and yeah, that's the messy part. So now we've just got a few more things to do that are pretty straightforward. Uh, we need to check the engine start system, and that is checking the safety switches for the speed control pedal, for the clutch lever, and the uh, PTO seat safety switch. Uh, other than that, then we just need to grease uh, a Zerk that's under the brake pedal, 
the top link on the three point and then the right side lifting arm also on the three point and then check the torque on the wheel bolts and that's the 50 hour maintenance done so let's knock those things out okay the first thing we're going to do is check the safety switch for the speed control pedal so let's see you need to be on the operator's seat and let's set the parking brake that's done uh, let's see the gear range should be in neutral uh, and the speed control pedal is in neutral, yes. Uh, shift the PTO clutch lever to off, which it is. So for this test, we just need to press the uh, motion forward pedal and try to turn the key. Uh, it shouldn't start. If it does start, there's a problem. So we push that down. There we go. Success. The second thing we're going to do is check the uh, PTO clutch lever. So again, everything's in neutral. We put the PTO clutch lever in the on position and then we turn the key. And it does not start. All right, that is also a pass. Let's see, last test. Park and brake on. PTO is off, we're in neutral. Everything is good, so we're going to start it. Oh, can't. The PTO is on. All right, we're going to start it. We are going to release the emergency brake. Engage the PTO. Stand up. Perfect. We've got bolts and nuts and the torque specs are different 145 and 166 we're going to do 155 i think that's a good middle of the road good good Good. Good. Now we'll do the nuts, which are 123 to 141. So let's see, let's do 130. How about that? Uh, 135. All right. All right, I'm going to do the front, but I think you get the idea. This is from 57 to 67. I've got it set to 65. Wheel torquing done. So now we're going to do a little greasing. First, we're going to get this fitting that's underneath the brake pedal. Let's see here. Yeah, it looks like it's got plenty of grease in it. All right. Do the top link. You don't want to fill this up. That's in there. And you want the side link. Come back here. There we go. All right. That is the 50 hour maintenance on the tractor completed. Okay, so we've done the hard part. Uh, the only thing left now is the maintenance on the loader. Uh, and there's really only two things we need to do. We need to check the torque on all the bolts that hold the loader frame, and we need to lubricate the front end loader. Um, there are six lubrication points, six Zerk fittings on the loader arms themselves on each side, and then there's also a Zerk on the cylinder that 
uh, slides up and down uh, for the quick attach on the bucket. So let's take a closer look, get that taken care of, and finish this project up. All right, let's look at the lubrication points for the front end loader. I've lifted it up off the ground just a little bit to make some of these easier to see. So here is Zerk number one. And here is Zerk number two. Zerk number three is down here on the bottom. Number four, back up here on top. Number five, number six, and then not shown on the diagram in the manual, but there's one of these on the quick attach system on the bucket uh, on each side. So I'm going to go ahead and get those done and knock that out. One, two, three, four, five, six, and the quick attach. All right, do that on the other side. That'll be that. All right, the last thing we're going to have to do is to check the torque on the frame bolts underneath here. Now, in the manual, they indicate uh, bolts numbers 2, 3, and 4. Uh, and the uh, number 3 bolts have a different torque spec than the other two. Uh, and the picture in the owner's manual, I found a little unclear. So... All of these bolts will torque to a range of 91.5 to 108.4 foot-pounds, uh, except for the three that I indicated that are different, and they, are, uh, they show a torque spec of 59 foot-pounds. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, i finish that up, and this job will be done. I've got two different torque wrenches here to make this process easier. Uh, and this is going to take a 17 inch, a 17 millimeter, a 19 millimeter, and a 22 millimeter socket. So these ones that are of lesser torque value, those are the 17. One. These are set to 59 torque pounds. I'm sorry, foot pounds. All right. These I have set to 102. Okay, I'm not sure where that fell over, but we're going to keep going. This is set to 102 foot-pounds. All right, got to move my camera. Okay, guys, I am around the left side of the tractor, and I did want to show you this. Uh, when you're torquing the uh, frame for the loader on this side, this is the uh, mechanism right here for the parking brake. And as you can see, it hangs down in front of the uh, bolts that you need to tighten, but you can just push it by hand, and it'll, it'll get out of your way. So no problem there.
So guys, that's a wrap on this video. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, if you have any suggestions or hints on how this process could have been made easier or any tips you have, I would appreciate it if you'd leave those in the comments below. Uh, as always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That's a big help uh, in the YouTube algorithm. And if you like this sort of content, uh, feel free to click that subscribe button and uh, ring the little notification bell. And when I upload new content, you'll be notified of that. I think I'm going to go inside and warm up with a cup of coffee. As always, I appreciate you being here. I hope we see you next time.